in which the slope represents the activity. So the black line is uh, related to the pure enzyme. If you look at this uh, green line, we start the reaction in the presence of cis surfactant, and you can see initially uh, the slope agrees with that of the pure enzyme, but upon uh, visible light illumination at this point, uh, the slope deviates from that of the pure and goes towards uh, the inhibited enzyme. Uh, therefore, we can reversibly control protein um, uh, function or enzymes activity. To further um, uh, follow any conformational changes within the protein, we use dynamic light scattering. Basically, the light in dynamic light scattering, light of a known wavelength is directed to the sample, and then the particles scatter uh, the light. The intensity of the scattered light is then determined by the size of the protein. This is the plot of protein de Younger versus surfactant concentration. Again, we can see that under visible light, uh, the protein undergoes dramatic unfolding, as we can see the size is increasing, but under UV light uh, illumination, the size of the protein is uh, similar to that of the pure protein, which shows that protein adapt a native light conformation under UV light. To further support this, we perform fluorescence measurements with <coughs> NIRET. NIRET is a, a hydrophobic probe. Uh, uh, fluorescence properties of NIRET is very sensitive to the polarity of the environment. Basically, in more hydrophobic uh, environment, NIRET yields more intensity. As I mentioned in early slides, uh, when protein is folded, most of the hydrophobic residues are located in the interior of the protein. But as the protein unfolds, these hydrophobic residues now becoming exposed to the cell, uh, solvent, which results in an increase in the hydrophobicity of the environment. Therefore, more the, high, uh, more the intensity of the NIRET indicating uh, more unfolding. So again here we can see that um, in the presence of trans surfactant, the top line, um, the intensity progressively increases, which shows progressive unfolding, but not uh, under UV light. Another method that we used was uh, SAM, small angular neutron scattering, uh, basically similar to dynamic light scattering, but here we use a neutron beam. And that the, uh, the other advantage of SAM's technique is that uh, not only we can uh, determine the size of the protein, but also we can obtain the exact shape that protein <coughs> adapt in the solution. We can analyze SANS data using different methods. Uh, Guinier and PDDF both give us a radius of gyration of the protein, and we can apply GA struct to obtain the exact shape that protein adapt in the solution. <coughs> um, This is a PDDF analysis. Basically, PDDF is a plot of PR versus R, where PR is the probability of finding two scattering centers at distance R. Uh, so in the PDDF, uh, the peak position gives us uh, the R equals to radius of the protein, and the position in which uh, PR returns back to zero uh, gives us the maximum dimension within the protein. And if there is any secondary peaks in PDDF, that shows presence of aggregates. This is the summary of the results uh, of SANS data. If you look at the first uh, column, we can see that the radius of uh, gyration of the uh, protein progressively increases with addition of trans surfactant, which shows progressive unfolding. But if you compare it like 18 millimolar um, concentration under UV light, the uh, degree of unfolding is much less than that of the um, trans surfactant that provides the ability to reversibly control protein function and thus protein structure. This is the shape reconstruction analysis. Basically, um, the protein is treated as a thousands of scattering, uh, spherical scattering centers, the position of which is adjusted until the experimental data um, agree with simulated data. And then that gives, our, uh, gives the structure of the protein. So again, we can see that with addition of trans surfactant protein undergo dramatic unfolding, but in the presence of um, the cis surfactant protein adapt a native light conformation. Um, in contrast to carbonic and hydrase, in the case of lysozyme, which is another enzyme, uh, we saw that protein uh, gains some superactivity upon uh, protein unfolding. Again, under visible light, similar technique have been used to follow conformational changes within the protein. Uh, here again, we can see that under visible light, protein unfolds, but under UV light, protein adapt a, a native light conformation. But this time, upon unfolding, the activity of the enzyme is increasing. 
uh, sense, uh, similar results have been also uh, observed for the case of ribonucleus A. Uh, SAMS technique uh, have been used to follow conformational changes within the protein, and we saw that basically unfolding occurs away from the active side of the lysosome in the hinge region. Basically, this protein is a two-domain protein, and the hinge region which connects the uh, two domains. 